So, and it's two things. So really cool that you're sharing this because another interview that we've done today is with uh, a warrior that I told you about, Michelle, Michelle Costello. And it's so cool how your share and hers are interlinked. And that leads me to my next question. Um, so genetic testing, why? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't, I didn't have any idea that I should do any genetic testing until I received my diagnosis. And then I'm, then I'm, my wife and I are sitting there talking to a genetic counselor and we're freaking out because we have this big diagnosis over our head. Like, why is genetic testing not happening pre-diagnosis? Because with Michelle's story, that, that should have been taking place like automatically mm -hmm. because she's BRCA, BRCA2 positive or BRCA positive and like it should have happened right out of the gate and it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like you said, you didn't have a family history that would have triggered us to make the testing optional for you. Um, and so it, unfortunately, some people are the first in their families to get cancer and they don't necessarily have a hereditary cause and we don't know why they get those cancers. Um, you know, I when I was a cancer genetic counselor, I saw tons of women who were young, got breast cancer, and then tested negative for the genetic testing. However, if you have a personal or family history of any of those things that I just mentioned, then whether you've had cancer or not, you absolutely could be a candidate for genetic counseling and testing. And that's what we should be trying to get to. We should really be trying to make sure we're doing really good family histories in people of all ages to make sure that we catch them in their family histories to offer testing before they get sick. You know, as you well know, cancer is one of those things that's really hard to find cures for. Um, and it's also hard to prevent in a lot of cases, but in cases where we find genetic factors, um, we often can actually detect cancers at earlier stages where you don't need all of the invasive treatments that come with more aggressive cancers. And also sometimes we can prevent them altogether. So if we're able to do that and genetic testing can give us a, a window into those people who need those types of services, we could actually help to save their lives, to prevent them from getting cancer, or at a minimum to make sure that we catch it as soon as possible. Wow. So if you were to advise somebody that does have a familial history of cancer, like go get, get the testing, like do it. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, the first thing we recommend is genetic counseling only because there's lots of things to consider with genetic testing. Um, one of those things is that if you haven't had cancer, but you have living family members who have, um, our recommendation is actually to test those living family members first, if possible, because that okay. lets us make the link between the cancer and the genetics. So if we test that person and they're negative, that tells us that their cancer wasn't caused by the, any particular genetic risk. And then we don't need to do that testing for you. Um, however, if we do that testing and we can make the link between their cancer and a genetic risk, then we know exactly what to look for in other people in the family. That gotcha. being said, if you don't have a family member who's available for testing and you still have those things in your family, it is absolutely valuable to do genetic testing and it can still absolutely give you good information. Um, and what a lot of people don't always know is for most people who have the types of family histories that I mentioned before, insurance almost, you, almost always pays for, for some of that testing. So it's not that people are gonna have to go out of pocket for testing. These are all really standard guidelines. Unfortunately, they're just very, very much underused. 